if there is no God, then we are all trapped in a world filled with senseless and unredeemable suffering with absolutely zero hope of delivering from all the evil in this world. But for the Christian, God does exist. And evil and suffering can result in a greater good. Plus, there's hope and meaning for the future because life does not end in the grave as many want to believe. So why do we need a Savior? Well, first let me share a little bit about myself. There was a time where I said arrogantly that if Jesus was real, he better come down here and show me. While he was saying that now, just sickens me. How ignorant and how arrogant I was as a 20-year-old. Just, I thank God, though, that he pricked my heart and opened my eyes. You see, all of us are entitled to our opinions. And sadly, many of our high-minded opinions are going to end up causing us to end up spending eternity in hell. First, let me say this. All you naysayers out there that want to add comments and say, well, why would a loving God throw people into hell? Again, another skewed view of how people view our Heavenly Father. God does not choose to throw us into hell. We choose when we use our own free will to choose to deny his gift of salvation, which is through his son, Jesus Christ. We do that, not God. I mean, think about it. How many of you would want God to force you into spending eternity with him? Give you an example. Have you ever had a guy or a girl that just kept bugging you to go out with them and who just happened to be so infatuated with you, like at the highest level, and you couldn't do nothing to get a break? How would you feel if that person that we're talking about could force you to be with them or love them against your will? You wouldn't want that. So why would a kind, loving God force you to choose his gift of eternal life? You see, God has given all of us enough evidence that he is real. But many people, sadly, who love their sin or just think that they're much smarter than our God is, they refuse to listen. This message is going to fall on many deaf ears, I know that, or those who just refuse to believe because they've been deceived by the devil. Out of everyone that will see this video, what I'm hoping is to reach those whose hearts have been pricked or touched by God in some way, and they're open to hear. You see, Satan has deceived many of us, and even me at one time, and our hearts become so hardened that we can't even see the truth. It's no secret that all of us are going to die one day. What many people think is that they have all the time in the world to decide who they're going to follow, whether it's the world or it's Jesus Christ. Let me make this clear, though. Once you close your eyes in death and you've not made a decision to follow Christ, you don't get to come back to get it right. This is your dress rehearsal, so to speak. So you better not take it lightly. You see, as human beings living in this temporary world, it's very easy to believe that this is all there is. But like I said earlier, God has given all of us so much evidence that he's real that many just ignore it because they think they're smarter than the creator. And I'm not trying to be mean here, but how stupid is that? I mean, let me simplify it to those who might hold this view. So imagine you're buying a brand new computer back in 1971 when they created the Kenbach One. Now, some of you have never heard of it, but it wasn't Apple. There was a computer called the Kenbach One, which was the very first home computer. Now, would you not read the manual to learn how this thing worked if you brought it home? Wouldn't that be stupid to think that you were smarter than the person that actually created the computer? Well, if I can apply this example with a computer, how much more should it apply in regards to what God has already told us in his word and shown us by what he's created? I'll say it again. How stupid is that? I'm trying to get you to think, and even if you don't care to hear what I'm saying, take the time to investigate and find out what the truth is, because like I said earlier, this side of eternity before you die is the only chance you get to choose. So just getting a little deeper here. So why do we need a savior? I have to take you back. So when God created everything, including Adam and Eve, and he placed them in the Garden of Eden, everything was perfect. And just like a good father, 
he gave Adam and Eve instructions and rules he didn't want them to disobey. And crazy thing, it was only one rule, and that instruction was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did they do? Like most of us do, they disobeyed their father. You see, the consequence of them disobeying was death and separation from God, and they were kicked out of the garden. Just read the book of Genesis. You see, those of you that think God is so unloving, he always has a plan, even when man screws it up. You know, God's plan after this fiasco was to send a savior to redeem the world or his creation, all of mankind. And that savior was Jesus Christ. Let me break it down. God is holy, which basically means exalted or worthy of complete devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. You see, sin cannot reside in the presence of God. He requires a perfect sacrifice, which was why Jesus came and had to die to save us. And here's why he had to die and why he had to be sinless in order to fulfill God's holy requirement. You see, God created us to spend time with him and to worship him. Yeah, sure, he could have made a whole bunch of robots that worshiped him automatically or followed him automatically, but who doesn't want someone to love them because that person chooses to? The Bible tells, tells us that we're made in his image, so why would he not want somebody to love him for him? So because all of us are descendants of Adam and Eve who originally sinned in the garden that I spoke of a little bit ago, we're all born sinners. It's in our DNA. And there's nothing that we can do about it within ourselves. And here's just a simple example of what I'm talking about that I think all of you can relate to. So imagine in your head a two-year-old. Do you have to teach that two-year-old how to be stingy? You know, like when they go, mine, when you're trying to teach them how to share? Or does that selfishness come naturally? You can't tell me a parent that actually taught their kid how to be selfish. They just knew how to do it. And that's just one example. So because we're born with a sinful nature, we need a perfect sacrifice in order to be acceptable in God's eyes. There's nothing that man can do in his natural state to be good enough. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 10, that there is no one righteous, not even one. So no good works, no religious acts or rituals can save any of us. Sadly, man has been duped into believing that they can earn their way into heaven, but they can't. You see, God made it very simple. So all we had to do was put our trust in his perfect sacrifice, which was Jesus Christ. Which is why it says in John, the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, that there is only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son, period. I hope that makes sense. This is why in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, it reads this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, says the Lord, that I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, these are the people who think that they did all these good things in Jesus' name, but never lived their lives for him, nor did they accept him, because if they had, they would not have heard these words spoken to them when they finally stood before God. You see, this is a dangerous area to play with. And it's important to examine yourself and to really work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, as the word says, because it's that serious. Many religions focus on rituals and good works as a way to get to heaven, and that's a lie from the pit of hell. I believe in scripture it's very clear that salvation is only attainable through Jesus Christ, and I believe it's so that sinful and boastful men and women could never boast or brag that they made it to heaven because of something that they did. And it, it kind of excites me. I mean, how ingenious was that of God, right? You know, you know how we are as human beings. Hey, look at what I did, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Man is prideful. And all of us can attest that if it was left up to us to get to heaven by something that we could do, we would definitely brag about it or puff up or smack ourselves on the back like we did something. But with that being said, there is something that you do have to do to have eternal life. And that's accepting Jesus Christ 
that he is who he said he is. Believe it in your heart, and you need to make a verbal confession of that belief. Sound simple? It is. Plus, you also have to repent of your sins, which means you need to ask God forgiveness for them, and then you need to turn from them and don't go back to repeating them. You also need to begin studying and learning what God expects from you as his child. And as I said earlier, working out your own salvation by following what he taught us in his word. Just like you need that manual for that Kimbach One computer I told you about, you need the word of God, the Bible, to navigate this life. I'm just going to go a little bit deeper. Man born of woman has a disease called sin, and there is no earthly cure for it. The only cure for our disease called sin is Jesus Christ. And the only way to be cured is to accept, believe, and confess, and follow him. All things that man tells us that we have to do, such as, you know, rosaries or confess our sins to a priest or we need to light a certain amount of candles or we need to go door to door preaching to people, say Hail Marys, wear spiritual underwear. Yeah, I said spiritual underwear. And on and on and on. These are just rituals that are made by man and are not only not in the Bible, but they're not required for eternal life. These teachings are a form of deception and will not get you into heaven, but only having a relationship with Jesus Christ will get you into heaven. You see, man in his sinful nature has shown us from the beginning of time how he loves his rules and his rituals, and I believe how this happens is because many of these behaviors are passed down from generation to generation, and it's just what we do, you know, or what we've always done, sadly. And it's dangerous, which brings me back to what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and this is the most important part, and who correctly handles the word of truth. You see, we live in a world where everybody has an opinion. And instead of searching for truth, what we do is we tend to go with what makes us feel good, or worse, what makes sense to our little finite brains, our little created brains. Remember in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And see, this is why it's so easy to be led astray, because our hearts are even deceitful. So in conclusion, I hope I've shed some light for those of you wondering, what must I do to be saved? The Bible says that God wishes that no one perish, but all have everlasting life. So think about it. If perishing was not possible, clue, hell, why would he say it? So if you're someone who is curious or agnostic or maybe even an atheist, my advice is to always pray and ask God to reveal to you what the truth is. If he says he wishes that no one perish, he'll reveal it to you. Our life. It's too precious to play with or spend eternity in hell suffering when Christ made eternal life very simple. You see, man is the one that complicates things, not God. I love you guys. If you have any questions or comments, just drop them in the comment section down below. I welcome them. And I know there's going to be those that disagree with me, and that's fine. All I can say is I love you guys too, and my prayer is that your eyes will be opened as mine were back in my early 20s. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit that like button for me as well. Until next time, I will see you. God bless.